Right. Uh, well, let me start with a short outline of my presentation. I will tell you a personal story on how I got introduced into scientific research um, and how this ultimately resulted in an MD-PhD program. And I will also show you some uh, uh, of the uh, the, um, uh, the back the backfalls and the, uh, the the positive sides of a PhD program, uh, and how this ultimately resulted in uh, a world-class paper in Nature Medicine. And I will uh, end my story with some conclusions. Well, to see how I got introduced into uh, scientific research, uh, we have to go back approximately five years, um, when I was also here in the blue room um, as a third year medical student. And actually I had no experience with scientific research at all. Um, at that moment I was listening to a lecture which was on the latest developments in uh, the treatment of cancer. And the professor that gave the lecture showed us at the, at the end of his presentation some slides on the research topic that he was currently working on. Well, this professor was uh, Professor Van Dam, who is a surgeon working right here at the UMCG. And uh, Dr. Van Dam told us how difficult it is for a surgeon to differentiate cancerous tissue from surrounding non-malignant tissue. And in trying to find a solution for this problem, he was inspired by nature, or actually by uh, the North American firefly. Because this little creature is capable of producing light by itself. And Dr. Van Dam thought that it could be possible to let cancer cells do the same thing. To let cancer cells uh, let emit light so that it would be possible to distinguish them uh, during a surgical operation. Well, at the end of this meeting, at the end of the lecture, um, I called Dr. Van Dam and um, asked him if there was any room in his uh, research group. Uh, I had no idea how he would react, but he was really friendly um, and he invited me over for uh, a short conversation. And in the next few months, I was working within the research group of Dr. Van Dam um, and did little projects on my own. And actually, this was really interesting. And I decided that I would wanted to continue this scientific research um, and apply for an MD-PhD program. Well, for those of you who don't know what an MD-PhD program is, um, it is actually a combined program um, in which the title of medical doctor is combined with um, the title of a doctor of philosophy. And that means that in the last two years of your master degree in medicine, you combine your studies with uh, two years uh, as a PhD uh, candidate. So, and this was actually a, a really challenging and uh, efficient way uh, of dealing with these two different programs. So I then started with my first project, which was about uh, creating or developing a decision-making tool. And since my, um, my research was about breast cancer patients and uh, the surgical treatment of breast cancer, I was aiming to see which patients were at uh, a high risk for uh, having positive surgical margins following breast cancer surgery. And to do that, I needed a lot of data. And luckily, uh, the Comprehensive Cancer Center in the Netherlands was willing to cooperate, um, and they handed over uh, a large data set but unfortunately, it, was, it turned out to be incomplete, or at least not all the variables were in it that we needed for our uh, analysis. Thus, I spent a few weeks um, to travel to 20 different hospitals in the north and the, uh, eastern region of the Netherlands by train uh, to collect all these data from the medical charts. And after that, uh, we did a lot of data analysis and development of this uh, decision tool. So after months of uh, hard work, we finally get to the stage that uh, we were able to submit a paper. And we wanted to submit to the analysis of surgical oncology, which is in uh, the top 10% of uh, surgical oncology uh, journals. Unfortunately, three months later, we got a reaction that our paper was rejected and needed a major uh, revision. So in the weeks to come, we revised our paper uh, we wrote, we wrote again, and resubmitted. And the final decision, again three months later, was uh, 
again, that this paper was definitely uh, re rejected. So, of course, this was uh, a big disappointment for us. Um, and I think it's important um, that you have a little time to recuperate from, uh, from such an event and then re-grab yourself and uh, start rewriting, taking the comments of the reviewers seriously and uh, well, create a better manuscript. Then I put it aside for a few days um, and looked at it again to revise and again rewrite. And ultimately we resubmit it to uh, another journal. But just before resubmission, I thought it would be a good idea to uh, look at PubMed and to see if anything happened in the past six months, and if there were any developments that I should include in my paper or um, I should update my reference list. So I looked at PubMed and I was shocked to find a paper with exactly the same title as uh, my research, which was published two days ago. So I quickly take a look at the abstract uh, and I had to con conclude that this was exactly the same research um, as we had performed in the uh, past months. So this was an even bigger disappointment. I downloaded the abstract um, and, the, and the full text. Um, as you can see, all the parts in, in yellow were almost exactly the same as um, the paper that we wanted to submit. So then I feel really depressed. <laughs> Um, and again, there was a need to recuperate from this. Uh, but I think you always, as all things in life, have to see uh, the positive things, although it is almost impossible at, uh, at this time or at this moment in time. Um, so we put it aside for a few weeks um, and we rewrote the entire manuscript, uh, submitted it again, and finally we were able to, uh, to publish it, although it was not in the impact factor that we had hoped for uh, initially. So this was a big disappointment, um, but there, was, there are also very positive things about the PhD program, um, which I want to show you um, with this second project. Because after project one, we uh, started a clinical project which was aimed to improve the outcome of uh, surgery in uh, patients with solid cancer. Um, and in this case, it was all about patients with uh, ovarian cancer. Because what you should know is that ovarian cancer um, is, is notorious for uh, its tendency to spread, to metastasize to uh, the peritoneal cavity. And the idea of uh, my professor, Professor Van Dam, was that we could let these little metastases light up uh, and that would make it possible to recognize them during surgery. Well, this has, has, had never been done before, um, but as a famous uh, saying by Henry Ford, it is not impossible, it just hasn't been done yet. So this was our uh, conviction and we uh, decided to start with this project. So we designed a simple proof of principle study in which uh, we wanted to uh, detect these metastases that are all throughout the um, peritoneal cavity um, by using an, an intraoperative imaging device. And we selected a few patients 12 patients in total, um, in which we wanted to uh, test this new technique. All the patients received a preoperative injection with um, folate FITC. Folate is a vitamin, and FITC is um, a, a fluorescent dye. And when you conjugate these uh, two together, you have a targeted fluorescent agent. And the good thing is that ovarian cancer cells express a specific receptor on a membrane called folate receptor in 95% of the cases, whereas this receptor cannot be found on uh, healthy cells. So after injection of this folate FITC, it would um, cling to the cancer cells in the peritoneal cavity and we could detect the small uh, metastases. But before you can do this, th uh, there is a lot of preparation that needs to be done. Um, we had to write an IMPD, which um, is all about toxicity profiling of, uh, of this new uh, agent that we wanted to use in patients. Um, we also need, uh, needed to write a research proposal, a protocol, 
um, research grants, we get approval from uh, the Medical Ethical Committee, but also from the CCMO, um, which, uh, because we were using human subjects. And of course, we needed to recruit patients for our pilot. But time will pass, um, and eventually we got in an interoperative setting with our first patient. So here you can see the patient lying down with the abdomen opened, and uh, we have a customized camera system that is placed above the patient, which is capable to detect the tiny amount of light that is coming from these metastases. And this is what the surgeon would see during surgery. So he has to identify the tiny metastases based on visual inspection alone. And when we used our camera system, we saw a Christmas tree. And this was really a thrilling moment. We were close to dancing on, uh, in the operating room. <laughs> of course, we didn't do that eventually. And we realized that we had something important. Um, and we wanted to, to put it in a, in a high impact journal. Um, and again, this is a team effort. Um, and there was sufficient uh, time pressure as we didn't want to get scooped again like in the previous paper. Uh, so we, we wrote the entire manuscript in only one and a half week uh, time, um, with a special thanks to Dr. Lucy Crane, who had an important contribution to this. And I think the most important thing, what we were trying to do with this paper, was to keep it as simple as possible, because everyone, especially in high impact papers, should understand uh, the true meaning of, uh, of the research that we were doing, and, well, it, it doesn't help if we try to wrap it up in long and difficult sentences. And Einstein was the first to, to uh, learn this to us. Everything should be made as simple as possible, but not simpler. And I think that would be a wise lesson. Well, we tried to aim high and, and send our paper to the New England Journal of Medicine. But it was only a few days uh, that it got back, and it was rejected, unfortunately. So again, the same stages, um, a short time for uh, recuperate, rewrite, revise, um, rewrite, and uh, resubmit. And this time, we decided to uh, submit to Nature Medicine. And again, we had a quick response within a few days. Um, but this time, it was a positive sign. Um, and we got uh, the accepted right away. And a few days later, our paper was um, was published on Nature Medicine on the website, uh, and we also got a lot of media attention from this. Um, it was a, 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 in the papers, the Guardian, for example, um, has spent some attention to our research project, but also CBS Evening News. So it was a pink cloud for a few days. And I think it's really important to celebrate these moments. <laughs> as it can, can fuel you and it gives you the strength to deal with future disappointments. So, in retrospect, uh, I'm telling you the importance of preparation, but actually I wasn't that well prepared myself. Um, I had no specific background in scientific research, and nor did I follow any classes, uh, scientific writing classes, or um, junior scientific master classes. And Yet, I got the opportunity to publish in a journal like uh, Nature Medicine. But still, I think that having been prepared better, that would have saved me a lot of time um, and would have been much more efficient. So I would urge all of you to, to see um, if there are any classes that you could follow on uh, eff efficient writing, for example. But there are also classes on critical reading, uh, laboratory courses, etc. And I think it's worth to try. So concluding, I think my biggest conclusion is that with a proper preparation, perseverance, and even uh, also a bit of luck, everyone can write a world-class paper. I think I'm the living example of that. Um, you should s surround yourself with interesting people that inspire you and that keep you um, and that push you to go further. You find yourself a research project that um, that you really like to do, that's really important, and take courses to improve your skills. And finally, if your manuscript is reject rejected, don't panic, it happens to all of us. Um, just remember the five R's and you will be fine. 
So no pain, no gain. Everyone who wants to reach something in life has to bleed for it. <laughs> so please stay, take your time to have a look at these figures. And I hope your conclusion will be, what was I waiting for? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Rick, uh, for your presentation. Are there any questions from the audience? Thank you for a wonderful story that had a happy ending. But if I could just correct one thing. You weren't scooped. You were screwed. And I don't advocate. I'm a whistleblower myself. And I certainly don't advocate that junior people be whistleblowers. But I think someone in your team has responsibility to science and to medicine and to scientific integrity to blow the whistle on these bastards who uh, took your paper. If they took your paper in that way, I seriously doubt they collected actual data. And I think it, it should be uh, an issue that should be raised. Who, who knows what else they're doing to whom? Yeah. Thank you for that remark. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah.